anybody here that loves Jesus? All glory to God. Hallelujah. I look at this awesome audience here, and I wonder where you were on all those nights I was sleeping in the jungle and hearing nothing but the mosquitoes are being in a war zone with just the sound of exploding war, or the jeers as you walked by bars. And then to be here is an awesome, awesome experience. Over 40 years ago, 1968, I made the cross, hung it on the wall of our building on Sunset Boulevard. And Jesus called me to walk a few hundred meters down the, down the street and then back, and I would do that every month. And then he called me to take the cross off the wall of the building and put it on my shoulder and walk across America. And then, by the grace of God, I have now carried the cross, sharing Jesus in every nation on earth. All glory to God. Not only not only every nation, but also every island group on earth. Over, over 76 million steps, and I've carried a combined weight of over 16 billion pounds, and I'm 69 years old, and I don't have an ache or a pain, never felt better in my life. Jesus did it all glory to God. You see, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go, and I am with you always, always. I have been in jail 24 times. I have been taken out to be shot before a firing squad. I've been blown into a car, laying in a lady's lap, and, and led her to Jesus. We have carried the cross in Iraq and Iran, in Saudi Arabia, Afghanistan, Pakistan, in every one of these places, we have gone with the cross, sharing the message of Jesus. This is my wife, Denise, and I wanted to have her with me as we walk these aisles because she has driven and been with me in 291 nations and island groups of the world. You say, does she follow you? No, she leads. She goes in front. She meets the gunman first, and then I arrive with the cross. We've carried the cross together in Iran, in Iraq, in Saudi Arabia, places where you wouldn't think women could be. And this is a treasure. This is my daughter, Sophia. And Sophia uh, has been in 38 countries. And, and um, as, as, as I was getting near 65, uh, many people are retiring, and they're playing golf. And the Lord told us to have another child and to pour my life into this precious child and into the young people of our world. And that's what we're doing. I love you both. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to go? Oh. Do you love the Lord? Let me let's lift up the cross and let's give all glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus did it.
I want us to do a great Jesus cheer. I'll say, give me a J, and you go J, and then S, U, S, and what does that spell? And you'll shout Jesus, because it's all about Him. Give me a J. E. 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 S. E. U. E. S. E. What does that spell? the Lord. You may be seated. It was 1989, and I was carrying the cross in uh, East Germany with my son Joshua. And it was t uh, during the time of the revolution against communism. It was before many of you were born, but there was the Iron Curtain. There was the Berlin Wall. Atheistic communism ruled across Eastern Europe. And as Joshua and I arrived, we, were, we met a girl and a guy, and they spoke English, and they became our interpreters. And there was on the Monday night a great rebellion in Leipzig, East Germany. 300,000 people gathered in Karl Marx Dodd Square. And I wanted to be there and lift the cross up in front of all that crowd at the speaker's platform. This was protesting communism and for liberty and freedom. When Joshua and I arrived, we arrived early, but the square was totally full, and there was no way as everybody was standing body to body. And as I looked at that crowd, my thoughts were this, if ever in doubt, my motto is preach. <laughs> and so I said to the girl, you interpret. I had the cross on my shoulder, and as I preached the shortest sermon of my entire life. I had the cross there, and uh, as I said these words, I said, all around me were these tough coal miners, men, defiant, under communism for decades. And I said, I have come from carrying the cross around the world to stand with you. And when she interpreted those words, the crowd around me exploded in, 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 in hollering, and, and they began to pull on the cross. And they picked the cross up off my shoulder, and my feet were off the ground. And they began to push it. I, 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 and, and, that my interpreter was knocked away. My son Joshua was knocked to the ground. It was like chaos. I thought it was a riot against me. But they finally ripped the cross out of my arms, and laying flat, it began to go through the crowd. And a chant began to come up. My interpreter rushed up to me, and I said, what is happening? And she said, they're saying, the cross, the cross, to the front, lift it up, lift it up. And soon, 300,000 people were chanting, and I would jump up and see the cross moving through the crowd. And finally, it reached the front, and they raised it up, and it exploded in praise. The cross, the cross, lift it up, lift it up. Dr. E.V. Hill of Mount Zion Baptist 
in uh, Los Angeles years ago. I preached in his church, and he was a mighty preacher. And uh, there was a lady, he tells about, that sat on the front row. And whenever he'd start preaching and he'd say, Jesus, she'd say, get him up, get him up, get him up. And he'd say, Jesus, again, she'd say, get him up, get him, come on now, get him up. And he'd finally preach and throw off his tie and then get a little hotter and throw off his coat as he was preaching Jesus. And finally, she'd say, you got him up now, keep him up, keep him up, keep Jesus up. And he said, that taught me how to preach. My challenge to you is to lift Jesus up. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all people unto myself. I was carrying the cross in Ethiopia, and it was during the time of the communist rule there. And in order to get through the roadblocks, the armed roadblocks, I'd just stick little Jesus stickers on all the troops and act like I couldn't understand them, and I didn't, and uh, just keep walking and sharing. Finally, I'm out in an area of total extreme poverty, and, and the kids had little skinny legs and big pot bellies from malnutrition. And they were all running along with the cross. And they'd put their feet under the cross wheel and the wheel would bounce over their toes. And I had an interpreter and he was up at the next town waiting. I had got him, he didn't want to walk. And so all of these malnutrition, hungry, but happy children had joined me and I would teach them songs. I, I can sing Jesus songs in any language. It's like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And all of a sudden, all the kids are going, Jesus, 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 hallelujah, Jesus, 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 hallelujah. You know, and so they're all, and, and they're just all joining in. And finally, I see an old man this elderly guy was coming toward me, and, and, and he had on little shorts, and his legs looked like they had no, nothing but bone. I mean, he was just skinny, and it looked like he could hardly walk. I thought he was going to fall down, and he comes up to me, and he goes like this and points to the cross on my shoulder, and, uh, and I could get sign language. He was wanting to carry the cross, and he was standing in front of me and blocking me. I say, do you speak English? He didn't speak English. I said, sir, you'll, you'll fall down. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't hurt you. I can't let you carry the cross. You're not able. Jesus loves you. And so I put the cross on his shoulder, and and then I was like holding like this, and he went, <laughs> and I, okay, and I stepped back, still ready for him to fall, and, uh, and he kind of did a little, I'll, I'll have to get out here where you can see, he kind of did a stutter step like that, and uh, I grabbed the cross, and, <laughs> and I, I, he went, I went like that again, and, and I said, Grabbed these, no, 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 no. So I stepped back. He did this little stutter step and started running with my cross. I mean, this guy had a, he was running and he ran and he ran and he ran. Now, if you've ever been to Ethiopia, that's high altitude. And, and most of the world champion runners, long distance runners are from Kenya, Tanzania, and Ethiopia. And this guy, I was getting tired. I've walked around the world, but I hadn't run around the world. And I am out of air. And I say, in the name of Jesus, this old man is not gonna beat me. And I'm just hanging on and I'm getting tired. Finally, I run up behind him, 
and tap him on the shoulder and say, slow down, slow down. It was like saying to a horse, giddy up, because now he starts racing across with my cross. And he's running flat out. And I am running. And I am so tired. And all these kids are running. And I began to see him getting weak. And I'm praying for him to, the Lord, to weaken him. Slow that guy down. I got to catch him. I got to get him. And finally, one of the little kids, about 12 years old, ran up beside him and he tapped his shoulder like that. And the old man passed it over on the child. And they never stopped running. And the kid is now running. And that little kid, the cross is nearly just, just nearly dragging the ground. He is going flat out. And in a little bit, another kid runs up, taps his shoulder. He passes it off to that other kid. I'm about to die. And I can't, I can't breathe. I say, Lord, help me catch the cross. If I don't, it'd still be running around the Ethiopian highlands. Finally, I rush up. I grab the cross, and this little kid is still trying to run. And I'm, oh, <laughs> I'm just breathing hard. And then I start laughing, and the Lord starts showing me. This is what the gospel is all about. It's about going. When the older generation starts getting weak, the young generation ought to run up and say, here, lay it on my shoulder. I'm ready to go. That's what I'm talking about tonight, is passing it on. Lift up, Jesus. Assume the responsibility. This is not the generation of Abraham. This is not the generation of Isaac. This is not the generation of Moses, or Elijah, or Samson, or David, or John the Baptist, or the Apostle Paul, or Spurgeon, or Whitfield, or Finney, or Moody. This is your generation. This is your day. I led my first person to Christ when I was seven years old and was saved in a dirt parking lot. I was called to preach at 15 and have done nothing but that all these years. And by the grace of God, I've given my life preaching on rock concert stages. I've preached on stage with Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, the Rolling Stones, Steppenwolf. Uh, I, I've shared Christ in the Beatles' last recording session with Bob Dylan, all out in that rock and roll culture in the 60s. I went into nightclubs preaching. I preached in wrestling matches. I preached during popcorn time and porno movies. I preached in houses of prostitution. I've been with almost every militant uh, radical group in the world. I've been in jail 24 times, taken out to be shot before a firing squad. I have preached at Joel Olstein's uh, Lakewood Church, that huge church, but I preached in beautiful little churches in the bush where there was no seats and the people were gathered around. I preached in the war zones, have been with Yasser Arafat, Gaddafi, all kind of people with the Pope, with Billy Graham on the streets in Northern Ireland. I give my best. I have preached to the teams of Major League Football and baseball teams. I have preached all over the world in every kind of stratus you can walk in. And I've done my best, but tonight I want to do something absolutely historic. I want to pass the cross and the mission of the cross and the call to reach the generations to you, to carry to the world. It is this that we need. I. I am now 69 years old. My next birthday will be 70. 
but I feel better than I did when I was 29 years old and started walking around. But Jesus, I know, has my time. I'm nearer to heaven than I was when I started. When I walked across America, I had a team of three guys with me. There were four of us. All three of them are in heaven. Much of my staff in Hollywood, when we at his place, are now in heaven. Half of my friends are already in glory. A quarter of them are sick and dying. A third, I mean, uh, another quarter are feeling great and still preaching and going. You understand? My generation is passing. One of the toughest things to do is to say, now it's your time. It is to know the time and the season. I am not resigning. Over Easter, we're going to the garbage dumps of South America with the poor children in the dumps with a cross. But the mission is now being turned over to you. One final little story. I was carrying the cross in Papua New Guinea, and I was way up in the mountains of the highlands. And as I was up there, I could hear the sounds of the, these are bow and arrow, very primitive people. And, and they would go, and they were hollering, and the people were streaming down from the mountains down to this road. And there'd be this language group and that language group. And one little group of uh, 50 or 75 people or 30 or 40 or whatever, they were gathered and we came up and they were sitting there. And as I was shared the gospel, told who Jesus was, then they said, you know, they prayed, they received him as their savior. I gave them a brief little Bible study, had no, nothing in their language to give them, and then told them I'd see him in heaven, but Jesus was coming soon. Well, as I started carrying the cross on down the way, I heard a noise. Somebody was hollering. I looked back, and this old man was calling us back, and we came back. He said, we heard up in the mountains that the man is coming with a cross. He said, and we walked for three days, and we sat here, and you came, and now we have Jesus. And you said that he was coming back soon. Do you think we should just wait here or do we go back to our village? Tears ran down my cheek, and I thought, Lord, we've lost the thrill, the urgency of sharing and believing your promises. This is the time. This is the moment to say, I now will reach my generation. I have in my pocket a, an iPhone, and I have an iPhone app, Author Blessed, right there in the app store. I have a Facebook account, and in seven weeks, we have over 200,000 fans on the Facebook account. 88% are young people. With technology, you can reach this world with your personal witness at the restaurant, at the gas station, with your friends. In person and of technology, there is. You can say, Lord, here am I. I accept your commission. You see, the cross is the good news. It is the news that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that God got down on this earth, in this mess. Jesus lived without sin, shed his holy blood, died for us, rose again triumphant over death and hell and the grave. 
ascended unto the Father, and his full-time job is making intercession for you. So if you've never received him, welcome him into your heart. But here is our challenge. In a moment, I'm going to take the cross, and I'm going to pass it out to you. As we do in, uh, as you've seen in rock concerts and things like this, where they do that body surfing, we're going to pass the cross flat. And the ushers will help and so that it doesn't drop on anybody's head. But all over, there are going to be crosses. The ushers have, we have about 30 crosses that will cover every section. And we want you to stand in a moment and then raise your hands and say, when the cross, when you're passing the cross on, you'll say, in the name of Jesus, I will share the message of the cross and carry the cross to my generation. Will you make that commitment? I, I don't know. I don't know how much time I have. My life may be shortly over. I may never do this again. I only did this out at Riverside the first time at, uh, at the um, uh, Winter Fest in Riverside a month and a half ago. But this is the night that I want to say, in the name of Jesus, I pass the cross to you, this generation. Carry it to this world. Stand up right now. And then we will, the ushers will be uh, helping uh, you start praising the Lord. If you feel like. All over, look as the cross is starts. You say, you make a commitment as the cross goes by you. You say, Lord, Jesus, I will pass it on. power of the cross is in the blood of Christ given for a soul the spotless sacrifice Amen. we are on. now redeemed ransomed with his life Amen. we have now received by grace the Amen. greatest gift of love Hallelujah. the power of the cross is in the blood of Is in the blood of Christ. 
want you to put your hands down for just a moment. If you have committed your life to Jesus Christ as your Savior and you say, I need to receive Jesus, I want him in my heart, would you raise your hand right now? I need to get right with God. There are hands all over the place. Pray this prayer with me, Lord Jesus. I repent of my sins. I welcome you, Jesus, who died for me to come into my life, put my name in your book, wash my sins away. I'm not ashamed. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those of you who said, I have made a commitment. I am really willing. I feel that God has called me to preach, go to the mission field, live a radical life for Jesus no matter what. I'm sold out, nothing holding me back. I am His for the rest of my life. Would you raise both hands if that's your commitment to Jesus? For all of you. Heavenly Father, I pray for the anointing fire of the Holy Spirit to fall upon every one of these young people as they take you and the message of salvation and love and life to this generation. For their friends, for those who are their Facebook friends, are their Zixter friends, are their text friends are the friends in school wherever it is we pray that every land in every nation whatever anointing that you've had upon me and upon my family as we have gone to the world all seven of my children survive and you have blessed you've protected us Station your angels around these as they've committed their life to you. Loose your Holy Spirit over them. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Baptize them with fire right now. I pray for that anointing of favor that they will go before leaders of the world, the garbage dumps of the world, to the hurting, to the needy, in the penthouses, and in the deserts. Lord, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. One last thing that I... One last thing I want to say is you saw a clip from the movie. The story of the walk has been made into a film. It was in theaters last year. Just three weeks ago, it came out on DVD. We have some of those that are in the book area. But you can go to your Christian bookstore or online. But every youth group, this is real film footage in the battlefields with Billy Graham, with uh, all kind, Yasser Arafat. It is awesome. I encourage you. You can carry the cross in your youth group, in your city in your nation, in your world, just through the DVD. This is a way I can't walk in every city. Let me tell you, I love you. God bless you. Thank you for having me here. Pray for us. All glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody shout to God.
for God is when you go back to your church on Sunday, I talk to your pastor, pray together, and I pray that you'll make a cross or take one of these crosses and you'll pass it through your church saying we will reach our city for Christ. We will reach our state for Christ.